Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level further maths. Here we're going through roots of polynomials, or in this case roots of quadratics, so we can answer questions from exercise 4a. Now hopefully this will be a familiar chapter to you, you'll have seen lots of work with quadratics in A-level maths and GCSE maths, but here we're just going to derive a few rules to do with how we get from the roots of the quadratics to the coefficients on the equation of the quadratic, um, and then solve some problems from there. So this is a very heavily algebra-based topic. You need to be good at algebra, you need to be good at forming equations and solving equations. All right, let's get started then. So uh, your typical quadratic equation looks like this, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where x is a member of the complex numbers. So in this case here, and in further maths, all of our answers, all of the time, could be complex numbers. Um, generally, in more in this topic than other topics, but it could also be a complex number. So x is a member of the set of the complex numbers. So we could have roots such as a plus bi. And remember from the roots from the um, from the complex numbers chapter that if a solution is a plus bi and all of these coefficients here are real, then a minus bi must also be a root of that quadratic, okay? So that little nugget of information there does come in hand in this uh, module. Okay, so either we have two real roots or two complex roots, forming a complex conjugate pair. Um, but what we're going to use is the notation of alpha and beta to describe the roots or the solutions of the equations and normal letters a, b and c to describe the um, coefficients of the equation of the polynomial. Coefficients is basically a posh number, a posh a word, sorry, that means the numbers that go in front of the terms x squared, x or nothing in the equation. Okay, so imagine the roots of the equation ax squared plus bx plus c are given by some alpha and beta values. We can therefore write down the following relationship that ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to a, now a is effectively a factorised down number at the front here, the same a as this value at the front here, and in brackets x minus alpha, x minus beta. So remember that's how we effectively solve quadratic equations. Um, we try and factorise first and then we, um, then we solve them by finding out what value does x have to be to make the bracket equal zero. And in the case here, it's alpha and beta. So for example, when we have x squared plus 8x plus 12 equals zero, the roots are minus 6 and minus 2 because we can factorise it into x plus 6 and x, minus t and x plus 2. Okay, effectively this is what it's like here, but really we would write it as x plus 6 and x plus 2 but effectively this is this is what it's referring to in this notation here. All right then, uh, for example as well we have 2x squared minus 9x minus 5 equals 0. And we have roots here of a minus a half and 5. And the reason for that is because we can factorise it into, well we wouldn't factorise it like this, we'd factorise it as 2x plus 1 and then we can factor out a 2 from that bracket and leave it as x minus 5 on the right. Okay, so um, what we can do then is we can derive some rules from how to get from the coefficients to the roots and from the roots to the coefficients. Okay, so let's take what we have here, that are quadratic, and we're going to expand the right-hand brackets, x squared minus ax minus beta x plus alpha beta. Grouping like terms, we'll group the alpha and the beta x's together. Divide through by a, and then what we'll now do is compare the left-hand side of this equation to the right-hand side of this equation. Now we've both got x squareds on the left and right, so that doesn't really form an equation for us, but that's useful to know. So now we can compare the x coefficients here. So what we can say here is that b over a is equal to minus alpha plus beta, and what, we'd, what we're gonna use the equation as is minus b over a, is equal to alpha plus beta. So if you know the two roots, 
then you can add them together and that will give you the negative of the coefficient that will go in front of x. And for the coefficients at the end, the coefficients of nothing, the coefficients of 1 effectively, we have c over a equals alpha beta. So if you know the roots of your, <coughs> of your polynomial or your quadratic, you can times them together and get the value of c over a at the, f at the end of that quadratic equation there. So it's two equations here that we need to now remember that will help us link the roots of the uh, quadratic equation back to the coefficients of the quadratic equation um, uh, and what the original equation was before it gave us the roots. Okay, so this is what we're going to have to remember up here. So this is what we're going to be using in this question here. The roots of the quadratic equation 2x squared minus 5x minus 4 are alpha and beta. Without solving the equation, find alpha plus beta, alpha beta, 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta, and alpha squared plus beta squared. Now we don't need to solve these because all we need are these equations here that will help us work out the answers. Now what we need here is to first of all know the values of a, b and c. We can pull them straight off. a is here, b is here and c is here. Remember that the negative is going to be involved as well. So what relationship are we going to use to find alpha plus beta? Well, we know that alpha plus beta is equal to minus b over a. We can always use this formula here for quadratic equations. These are the roots. These are the coefficients. This is the equation that always links the roots to the coefficients. So what we can do then is add alpha and beta together, which is what we're looking to find the answer to, uh, and set that equal to minus b over a. So that's going to be minus 5, minus of minus 5 over 2. So that gives us 5 over 2. So we know that the two roots are going to add together to make 2.5. Okay, so that's all we need to do for part A. Part B looks for us to find alpha beta, and we've also got a formula for that up in the top left as well. That's just C over A. So substituting the values, minus 4 over 2, and we get minus 2. So our two roots must times together to make minus 2. Okay, so those are the two easy questions when it comes to quadratics. Let's now have a look at C. 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta. How can we rearrange this expression here, 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta, so that it's in terms of either alpha plus beta or in terms of alpha beta? Well, let's start to add the equations together here. So remember, we want to create common denominators and times the other denominator multiplier on the top as well. Add the two terms together and combine the two, two fractions together. And this is what we've got here. We've got alpha plus beta, which is our first star here. So we know the value of that. So that's 5 over 2. Divided by alpha beta, we know the value of that. So that's minus 2. So just divide 1 by the other. And you get minus 5 over 4. Okay. So if you were to do 1 over your root plus 1 over your second root, you'd get minus 5 over 4. Okay, alpha squared plus beta squared. So how are we going to get this back in terms of alpha plus beta and alpha beta? Well, what we can do here is we can effectively think of this as alpha plus beta squared. Now, when we expand this, alpha plus beta squared, we're going to get alpha plus beta times alpha plus beta. So we're going to get alpha squared plus alpha beta beta from expanding the first bracket and from expanding the second term we're going to get alpha beta plus a beta squared. Now we do want the alpha squared and the beta squared bit we just now need to subtract two alpha betas because that's going to be included in our answer for alpha plus beta squared. So it's just alpha plus beta which is 5 over 2 we're going to square that and then we're going to take away two lots of alpha beta which was minus 2 so calculate the answer here and you get 41 over 4. Okay, so these are four very standard questions to do with the, to, to do with the coefficients of a quadratic and finding out some of the relations to do with how the roots combine together. 
Okay. This question here is asked in the reverse order. So uh, here we're not given the coefficients of the uh, quadratic, we're just given the roots. And we're given minus 3 over 2 and 5 over 4. And we're asked to now work our way backwards to find the coefficients of the quadratic. Okay, so here is what we're looking for. We're looking to have um, x squared plus b, to b over a, x plus c over a equaling 0. We've got two formulas to be able to work out, b over a and c over a. And then given that our answer wants it as integers, we'll just have to times by a at the end. So how do we work out um, what b over a is? Well, if we know alpha and if we know beta, we can add the two together and get minus b over a. So simplify that fraction there. Cancel out the negatives on both sides. Okay, and there we are. So we have a quarter is going to plop into this coefficient space here in front of the x. Uh, that's the value of b over a. Let's do the c over a formula as well. So c over a is equal to alpha times beta. So times the two roots together. We get minus 15 over 8. So in this spot here, we're going to have a quarter. And in this spot here, we're going to have minus 15 over 8. So substitute those values in. And we're very nearly there. Now, the last thing for us to do is to make sure that we have integer values. Integer means whole number values on the coefficients of uh, the x squared, the x, and the c at the end. So I think what we need to do with this quadratic equation now is times through by 8. Seeing how they've been substituted in. Times through by 8, and we get this. 8x squared plus 2x minus 15 equals 0, and that's our final answer. That is the quadratic that will have these two values here and here, as its roots. Okay, so that's how we've worked backwards using the formulas of quadratic equations and how the roots combine together to make the coefficients. All right, so your turn to have a go at these two questions here, then pause the video and try these two out. All right then, so let's have a go at these two questions here. Then before we have a go at the questions, I'm just going to write down at the top, a alpha plus beta equals minus b over a, and alpha beta is equal to c over a. Okay, so those are the two formulas I'm going to be using quite regularly in this problem, so it's important that I know them and I can just recall them straight away. Alpha plus beta, how do we work out alpha plus beta given this equation here? 7x squared minus 3x plus 1. Well, I can just do minus of minus 3 over a, which is 7. So the value I get here is 3 over 7. So it's just a case of substituting numbers into formulas that you have to remember. Alpha times beta, well, in that case, we'll use the second formula here. So we're going to get c, which is 1 over a which is 7 so that's our answer 1 over 7 there okay part c i'm going to need a little bit more space for 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta so the way we do this is we combine them by timesing by common denominators and then add the two fractions together So it's generally using the same method there. So it's going to be alpha plus beta over alpha beta. Now we know the value of alpha plus beta. That was 3 over 7. We know the value of alpha beta, which was 1 over 7. So do one fraction divided by the other, and we get the value 3. For d here, for alpha squared plus beta squared, remember the little trick for this one is to do alpha plus beta squared take away 2 alpha beta. Why do we rearrange it like this? Well, we've got a formula to work out what alpha plus beta is, and we've got a formula to work out what alpha beta is, so it's really handy to have it in this form. What we need to do now is just do 3 over 7 squared. So that's going to be 9 over 49. And then subtract 2 times 
uh, 1 over 7, so 2 over 7. So that would be minus times top and bottom by 7, that would be 14 over 49. Do the subtraction here and we get minus 5 over 49. So that's the answer to alpha squared plus beta squared. Okay, so those are the four answers to the first question there. Oops, that's not a question. Okay, question five then. We've got the roots. Now what we need is the um, integer coefficients on the x squared. So what we'll have here is we'll have alpha plus beta equals minus b over a. Now we add the two roots together here, minus a half, minus a third. That's going to give us minus five sixths. And that's going to give us um, minus b over a from the formula above here. So what we can say effectively here is that five sixths is equal to b over a. Uh, for the second part of the problem here, now we need to times the two together. So alpha beta equals c over a. So this is going to give us one half minus a half times minus a third, which is going to give us one sixth. So that's the value of c over a. And now what we have to do is substitute them into the question. So it's going to be x squared plus 5 over 6x plus 1 over 6 equals 0. And now because we want them to be integers, whole numbers, times through by 6, we get 6x squared plus 5x plus 1 equals 0. You could test this problem out. You could test this answer out by um, typing into the quadratic solver on your calculator just to see if it gives you minus a half and minus a third. It would be a good way of checking at the end of the paper. Right, so have a go at lots of other questions from exercise 4a. There are some questions that are a lot tougher than these and more problem-solving aspects to them. So do have a go at those questions as well. Don't hide away from the difficult ones. Challenge yourself on them because that's how you're going to become a better mathematician. All right then, thanks for watching this video.